Welcome back to Cards and Comics. Today my video is focused on Marvel PMGs and I'm focused there for a few reasons. One, recent prices are nuts and I'm going to show you some of those prices. Two, I happen to have a lot of the cards. Now I don't have any of the cool ones from 2013 however I do have a lot of cards from 2017 and 2018 which are some of the cards bringing some of the crazy prices. Um, as I'm going to show you. Now, um, the question I pose in the video title is, am I rich or just PMG rich? And that's because I'm a little skeptical of some of the prices that the cards are bringing. And um, I'm going to show you what my collection looks like and uh, what cards are in there. And then I'm going to, at the end of that, I'm going to have kind of a total of what those cards um, are currently bringing on eBay and what the total value of that collection is. And you decide if you think that's a collection worth that amount of money. And uh, it's just kind of like a way to look at it and say, hey, this is what I have. Um, I did not uh, intend to be a PMG collector. It just happened by me buying packs of cards that I accumulated some of these cards. Um, but now they're worth something. So it's kind of, in some ways, I want it to be worth that amount of money. But in some ways, I'm also skeptical and you know, um, a little fearful if I sell them, you know, even with the eBay's new rules that somehow people will be returning them or that they're just not real prices. So let's start with a peruse down the high selling uh, PMG cards. Now, here's a great example why I don't feel like this is a reasonable price point to look at is here you've got the Spider-Man Ultra from 2017 green selling for fifty thousand dollars on three consecutive days basically um obviously it wasn't paid for some of those times right same cards number four ten then you have the 2015 which is a beautiful card but there's a best offer the card was listed at forty two thousand dollars you have another 2017 spider-man ultra lot where you've got purples and greens best offer around 30,000 but then you get into cards that you actually know what they sold for 2013 Marvel red okay $18,000 is still the 2013 which is I can see that a little bit more because they're a little harder to get and they were kind of the OG cards right but then you get right into 2017 cards you know and um, you know who knows what these cards actually sold for but they were listed for 15 and fourteen thousand dollars right the purples and then you do have one here of 2017 purple selling for twelve thousand dollars basically um again the 2013 and 2015 i'm not as critical of just because i know they're harder to get and they were from product that um wasn't as coveted as later sets and so maybe the condition or the cards weren't kept perfectly you know um as people didn't know what the value would be, they are the OG versions, right? So a lot of the high prices are some of those versions, but here you've got, you know, this blue selling for $10,000 twice. Me skeptical again. Um, here's a 20, um, again, 2013 and 2015s are, are a majority of the sales. But again, you know, it doesn't take long for you to scroll through and you'll see a 2017, like a purple cloak selling for $5,000 just sets off a lot of alarms for me, right? A character who isn't as popular as other characters in the Marvel Universe, for someone to bring $5,000 to the table seems like a pretty odd you know thing to do and it was from december so it's just pretty recent so that's just kind of a taste of the craziness you're, we're seeing on ebay right and again i'm not as worried about the 13 and 15 sales as i am the 17 and 18 because that's the cards i have but it just doesn't seem right and again you know 2015 you know, Marvel um, Scarlet Witch gold one of one sold for the same price as the 2017 dagger uh, you know, uh, or cloak, sorry. Uh, you know, it, it just doesn't seem to be realistic, um, to say, to say something about it. A little skeptical. Okay. So again, I'm not, you know, saying that these are all fake sales. I'm just saying 
this seems like a bubble um, it seems like this could go down in value pretty qu rapidly if maybe only two or three people pull out of this market. Um, I don't know how many, you know, you got a lot of bids, but you don't really know if it's, you know, some shilling going on. Again, it's hard to predict when this is so new and it's just a pretty recent thing for these cards to be worth so much, right? There's not a huge history of the, these cards being this expensive. They've always been hard to get, always been collectible, but when you're getting five, 10, 15, 20, $40,000, you're, you're getting into heights previously not, not seen before. And again, my radar goes off a little bit in terms of that this may not be all up and up, right? That there could be some shenanigans going on. So there you go. That is the list there. Um, and then, um, so now I've kind of set the table for where the cards are selling for then we'll move into kind of my collection and then I'll end the video with kind of the list of cards I have and you can see what they're worth. Um, as you can see here, I've got a Spider-Man card here um, and I'll talk about it in a second, but I do have, you know, um, a little bit of history with the set and I'm an unintentional PMG collector. I like Spider-Man, so I just bought the set because I thought it was cool, and I just kept accumulating PMGs as I bought more and more cards. Um, so I did own at one point the one of one gold uh, Spider-Man uh, PMG. Um, I bought it off eBay for a, a buy it now or best offer, best offer, sorry, of three hundred dollars. I sold it in twenty eighteen as part of a large deal at the National. And I, I don't know what that card would be worth today. I think it's, I don't even, six figures, you know? I mean, crazy amount of money for the one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so that really is sad that I had enough foresight to buy it, but not enough to keep it. Um, but you got to remember back in 19 and 20, or in 18, say in 18 and 19, you know, a lot of these cards were 20 or $30 cards. And and that card was on eBay, just sitting there for a buy it now and best offer for a long time. And I finally just made an offer on it and the guy took it, okay? So, you know, it's not like there's a huge history of these cards bringing twenty, thirty thousand $30,000 or whatever the silly prices are today. And you gotta remember, this isn't the first set of PMGs, okay? The 13 set, I think there's a 15 set. I mean, there's, there's multiple other sets. So this isn't like everyone's rookie card, okay? So, um, but be that as it may, you know, I put a spreadsheet together and I look at what I had and I've got like $10,000 theoretically of PMGs, uh, and jambalayas as well. I threw them in there cause this is kind of, you know, all these cards from these sets. And so again, the ultra X-Men and, and Spider-Man sets are very similar in terms of inserts. And so I just kind of combined the two together and, and, and just looked at jambalayas and PMGs. Now, the card I have here is not a PMG. It is the metal, and a lot of people are calling this the silver PMG, and it's not. So in the set itself, there was a lot of um, this metal insert, which the PMG is based on, was in like every three or four packs, and you've got a lot of them. And in fact, I have the full set of these metal cards with multiple, multiple doubles. In fact, like... Uh, some really good ones too, like I think Venom. I got multiples of Venom, right? Um, now this one looks a little weird because it's got that little fuzzy there, but that's not, that's just a little piece of fuzz. In fact, I can pull it out here and uh, show you that it's not, you know, on the card anymore. See it? It's gone. And now this card is interesting because um, you look on the back, and again, this is from EPAC, and you can see the EPAC. Uh, they come with this little slip when you get it from to check out my cards. This is the achievement. So you had to get the full set of these, I believe there's 50 of these metal cards to get this card unlocked and then you get it as a, as a achievement. And so this card's pretty tough because you had to get the full set of marble metal. If you think about it, you know, even if they're one in four packs, you're getting, uh, you know, two, you know, to get 50 of them, you're opening 200 packs of cards in perfect collation and you're not going to get it. You know, this is like a, and this is, I think, Fleur Ultra Metal was, or sorry, Fleur Ultra Spider-Man was either $12, $13, or $14 a pack. So you're talking like two or $3,000 to, to get this card through packs. And now, of course, you can trade and everything else, but 
you know, this is an interesting car. Now, it's not a PMG because all PMGs are numbered. This, these are not numbered. Um, so this is part of that base metal set. So I just want to show you, like, you know, don't get fooled into thinking that there's a silver PMG set. They're not. It doesn't say precious metal gems, and they're not numbered. Um, so I'll start with my lowest number cards, which I don't have any green. So I had about five greens at one point, and my greens were um, pretty much, um, you know, sold back in uh, 19 and 20. I had the Hulk green, so another card I wish I had back. Uh, I don't know what I sold it for, but obviously it's green more now um, in theory. So here's some blue cards I own and I'll start with, you know, sort of the most expensive one, which is, um, you know, according to last eBay sold. And again, you gotta take these things with a grain of salt because I'm gonna talk about that a little bit too, is because I'm gonna show you all these cards and you're gonna really, you know, uh, do you really think that this is a $10,000 collection here but you might you know and it might be i just I, I i'm a little doubtful and when i look at the data i think there is going to show that there is some funky stuff going on but this card theoretically according to the last sold is between three and four hundred dollars so this blue pmgs and the blue pmgs are numbered out of 49 and again this is the slip but you can see you know 18 to 49 there um and there you go. So that's, I mean, these cards are super nice. And I think the one thing about eBay that doesn't do them justice is if you don't get them in the right light, they don't look very good. And check out my card did a horrible job of taking photos because um, they're very refractor. They, they have kind of a depth of color. And even the bronze, the easiest ones to get, are um, much cooler than just the base. And you can see it says Precious Metal Gems at the top. And of course, that's, that's blue. And then the you know um two you know number i guess you know i have both two of these so i have two spider girls and of course it says they're worth 250 which is what the last one brought but again i i don't know uh, spider girl has never been a huge character because they've never met let spider girl exist really in modern times because you know she's the daughter of spider-man and that means that Mary Jane and them had to have a baby and he's a dad and you know, all this stuff and they don't want to do that. They want to keep him like 12 years old or whatever he is ever, you know, forever. So this character never gets a chance to really exist um, outside of, you know, other kind of stories. So and I'll go through the rest of them just kind of like, you know, just to show you like what I, you know, what they look like. Um, here's the Green Goblin, Luke Cage. I'm not going to show you every, you know, like, I just want to show you the cards just to, so you get an idea of what, you know, these 17 cards look like. You know, Shocker, there were some, I think, two daggers. And you can see I've got a lot of blues. Um, you know, I, for whatever reason, you know, I got blues more often than I got reds. You know, see that. Um, there's Iron Fist. And I got no purples ever. I never got a purple. I never got a gold myself. Um, I only got um, blues, reds, and greens. And then, the, of course, the bronze, which are kind of the base. But they're super, you know, and then here's sort of silver sable. Um, it says silver sable is card number 34 and like 100 bucks. So most of the blues, uh, you know, over 100 bucks. So... You know, according to my chart, which I'll go into a little more detail. Now, this card has some shenanigans with it, and I'll, I'll talk about it. But the last sale was 143 but I think this card sold for like $600 at one point. So this is why it's hard to take this seriously, because a card goes from 600 to 140 to 300 It just seems like nobody really knows how to either price them or there's some you know funny things going on. Now, next up is my Reds. And for, I think for a lot of good reasons, people like the reds because I think they just really pop. But, um, you know, they're not as rare as the, as the blues. But, you know, for example, this card here, the Spider Gwen, um, people just love this card. And the last one sold for, um, let's see here. I go down my list here. Um, this card sold for um, $560 was the last one sold. And 
there's been some multiple sales in that four to six hundred dollar range. So this card is pretty popular. Um, now Spider Gwen's a new character, so I'm not sure she existed in any other old sets. I don't think she actually did. So this would have been sort of her first appearance in a PMG set. So I can see why that card might be bringing a little bit more. The other big card I had was this one, which is Iron Man, which is a color match to a suit. This card has brought $900, but you know it hasn't sold that often um, in recent times. Um, in fact, the last sale um, was, let's see here. Uh, well, sold in November 14th for nine hundred dollars here's a scarlet spider which does really well with the red um and then again i got another spider girl in red so i got the blue and the red spider girl there's mary jane and her car doesn't bring a lot but you know this is what happens to these pmgs is the art matters i think to a lot of collectors um you know this mary jane is just one of the ugliest mary janes that's ever been drawn in my opinion and if you if you if this was a Todd McFarlane Mary Jane drawing, I think it would have gone bonkers. But this is literally like I don't know, like just woke up Mary Jane and and just not you know a, the normal looking Mary Jane we, we we see. And so I just feel like it just it doesn't even look like the character. So I think that hurt the card, Jackal, and then a Vulture. So you know that's all the reds I've got, which is. Interesting because you can see how much more blues I had now As far as bronze go, um, you know, there are some interesting ones. I've got Punisher and the, and the bronze are very reflective. In fact, they're almost like 3d ish a little bit more than some of the other colors um, spider Gwen and then, you know, obviously the spider-man, you know, uh, the miles Morales spider-man and all of these are, you know, big cards so like even bronze, so I go to the bronze pricing. Um, you know, the Spider Man last sold, you know, on twelve twenty for three eighty for this card right here. Um, you know, and so there you go. This card is like almost four hundred dollars, and it's the numbered out of uh, one ninety nine bronze. And so that just shows you, like, you know, the big characters do bring money. And I'm not really as worried about these characters because. They're always going to be worth something, but I do worry when you see like minor characters bringing tons of money. Um, now the other, the, now the other card I have that was interesting to me, I'll show you the back just so you can read it. It says 2018 Flare Ultra. So this is the X-Men version. Metal Blasters, Precious Metal Gems, Bronze, Old Man Logo, Old Man Logan, the MB0. So this is a card you can only get by again, redeeming the entire set of, of bronze metal cards. So this card is really rare. Again, I told you like, you had to get all the set to get this card, you had to get all the set to get this card. And so, um, Old Man Logan or Wolverine isn't really in this set as a character. He, uh, I think Weapon X is, but not like the classic looking Wolverine. So people kind of have gone nuts on this card. And, um, what I will say is that, um, this card alone has brought like around $1,700, um, in, you know, in a PSA seven. And I think this is where, um, things get just crazy. I think, um, you know, based on prior sales, I think this card is five, $600 currently. Um, but it's a tough card because you can't just get it from the packs. You have to, you know, do the achievement. So, um, and I'll go through some of the other cards. Uh, but yeah, that card is just another one of those kind of crazy cards. You know, Andy Venom, another Dagger, Mysterio, Shocker, Kingpin, which he's a huge character in the new Devil's Reign arc on, in, uh, Marvel. And I think some of these newer arcs, um, I do think Marvel likes to do these newer arcs into current media. So Devil's Reign would be an interesting arc for them to turn into actual media, uh, like a movie or something, because um, it involves a kind of like the you know the characters like uh, you know Daredevil and Elektra, which haven't really been a big part of the MCU and kind of get them away from. Um, the whole, um, you know, Avenger side of the universe. 
And then, you know, this is the other, you know, kind of big card from the bronze side. Uh, Captain America, and I'll just go into what this card's worth. Because um, it's just interesting, you know, like, what's, you know, this is a big character, right? Um, and it's card number uh, 45. And I'm looking at, you know, and it sold for $115. And it sold below what the Spider Gwen sold for recently. So it's just interesting, you know, like that the Captain America isn't as popular as Spider Gwen. Yeah. Um, and he sold underneath, um, let's see. Anti Venom sold higher, and so does Spider Man. So. The, of the cards I had, Anti-Venom outsold Captain America as well, too. So, again, I'm not saying it's 100% suspicious, but it's a little sus. And then, you know, on the on the other PMG side, I'm not going to show them all, but here's what the X-Men bronzes look like. I got the full set. Again, that's how I got the Wolverine. I had the full set. So, you know, and the big one here, um, I looked them up, is um, Magic, this card right here. Um, you know, um, maybe it's her first appearance as a PMG. I'm not sure, but magic is the, um, the big, you know, the big winner here. Now, the thing about the cards that are very interesting to me. Now, if you just take a Spider-Man, you can see how ref refractive the Spider-Man PMGs are and you compare them to the, um, you know, the X-Men, the X-Men are more like a foil etched. Versus is very re reflective foil. So they really changed up the design between 17 and 18. And I do think that people don't like this design. And even this year's X-Men Metal even went that direction even further. And I just don't think people like it. They like that refractory look. Um, so um, just something to keep in mind if you're investing in, the, in these products or just buying these products. The 18... I think the 17 Spider-Man is always going to be more valuable character for character. Like, you know, Psylocke's not in the set, but there are some characters that are crossovers. And so, you know, just keep that in mind that uh, if it's between, in both sets, I think the Spider-Man version will always be worth more. Think about, and here's the Jambalayas now. I do, I did get lucky and got two of the Spider-Man, uh, Spider-Man um, Jambalayas. And when I went to look at their pricing, um, this was one of the ones where, you know, they sold last around $400, 400 to 500. You know, I got 450 down for the pricing. Um, but they haven't sold since September. So I just don't know what a, what the Jambalaya Spider-Man would sell today with kind of the, the new market. And there's Carnage, and Doctor Strange. So I got some of the nicer... Uh, Jambalayas, but then once you get past those guys, it's just the villains rogue gallery. And, you know, in general, these villains aren't worth any more than another. So, like, you know, I look at these cards and most of the villains are in the $20 to $40 range, right? But we'll go to, um, you know, part two and uh, we'll go through the rest of the uh, information. I'll show you the spreadsheet and... Uh, some of the other stuff in the collection, you know, that I can't show you because it's more on EPAC still. And uh, uh, we'll go from there. All right, we're back. Now that you saw the cards, I've got here a list of all the cards I have. And I've got the uh, set, the date of last sale that I've tracked um, leading up to this video, and the price. And in some cases, it's an amalgamation of, of multiple prices if there was multiple sales. Um, I'm not always trying to cherry pick the highest price. I'm trying to make a realistic price point here based on recent comps. But you going through here, you can see um, I've got them sorted by set. So I'm starting here with the Achievement Spider-Man card I was telling you about. That's not a PMG, but it's a metal, but it's, it's harder to get one. And 265. And then Jambalaya, Jambalaya, sorry. Um, you know, Spider-Man's bringing 450. The Carnage bringing 213. Doctor Strange 150, and then everything else is 50 bucks or below for the most part. That seems realistic, you know. I think people would pay 25 bucks for Mysterio, Jambalaya. I just think that seems like a realistic number. Even at 250 or 300 dollars, I could see the Spider-Man bringing it. 450 seems a little high, but again, this last sale was in September. 
And I don't know what one would sell for today. And uh, I think a PSA 10 could sell for quite a bit right now in this current climate. So <clears throat> it's something worth watch, but not a lot of sold. Now going down to the actual PMGs, I start with the blues. Um, you can see the most expensive blue I have is the Spider-Man 2099. Uh, followed up with Spider Girls and Green Goblins. But in general, the blues have not, uh, you know, they're not selling for crazy money. And none of them are integrated, um, as you can see in the video. Um, but most of them are in that $100 to $150 range, right? So not too crazy. Then you go into the bronze. And again, the highest price bronze is the Spider-Man uh, number 50, 380, then Anti-Venom, then Spider-Gwen, and then everything is basically outside of Captain America under 100 bucks. And so these are numbered at a 199, so they are numbered. So again, these aren't the ones that are kind of crazy, but then you get into these cards like um, Iron Man, you know, $900, Spider-Gwen, 560, Scarlet Spider, $300. So the reds, I've seen a lot more of cards kind of going nuts. Now, um, looking at the, um, you know, cards like, you know, Fuller Ultra X-Men, Jambalayas, you know, you know, Scarlet Witch, you know, Magic, um, Jean Grey are, you know, not big, but they're selling a little bit higher, but you can see that, you know, again, only one card over $100 on, on the X-Men Jambalaya. So, and, you know, I've got the full set. Um, some of the cards I couldn't price because there was no, you know, no history sales. And then the last thing on the list is the full set of bronze PMGs. And there has been one sold before. So I've got that down for the X-Men set at $800. And then I've got the Logan... Um, let's see, achievement card at $600 because one sold for like $1,700 in a PSA 7. I don't know if that's shenanigans, but again, a very odd price. And so at the end of the day, even with the missing price points, the, the set, you know, everything kind of adds up to close to $10,000. And just looking at what I showed you in the video, um, you know, some of the cards here are on my um, EPAC um website you know you know it just you know does this look like ten thousand dollars of cards and some people might say yeah there's a lot of stuff in here it's a lot of cards a lot of spider-man stuff a lot of pmgs um a lot of jambalayas you know a lot of in cool inserts maybe it is ten thousand dollars um if you look at it you know there is like let's see there's 80 uh, five cards listed here, but you got to add another 49 to that. So you're talking 134 cards. Um, and so if you cost average it out, you know, it's like, um, you know, 134 cards. Um, you know, it's like $80 a card, something like that. Um, to get to that $10,000 range. So, I don't know. It just seems a little high and, you know, obviously it's cost averaging, but yeah, it just seemed when I added it all up, it just seemed really weird because I would definitely take all those cards and sell them and buy a big card at $10,000, right? Like buy something, uh, one thing that was worth a lot, you know, one $10,000 purchase, a comic book or, or one, you know, vintage card, you know, or I could go the route of getting everything graded. That's, you know, um, Spider-Man, you know, related, you know, the big Spider-Man characters, Spider-Gwen, Spider-Man, Miles, you know, Punisher, Iron Man, getting all those cards graded and then selling them individually or, you know, uh, auctioning those off. So I got a lot of options here, but, you know, so I don't really know what to do with it. You know, I don't know if just to sell it as is, invest in the grading, you know, and I just, you know, and with sales being so volatile, I don't know if I should wait to see if it's a true trend or if it's going to come way down. And by the time we get the cards back from PSA, they'll all be worth one third of the value that I thought they were, you know, those things could happen. So let me know in the comments what you think, you know, is this a $10,000 collection? Is this something that you would get graded? Um, would you sell as is? Would you try to move it now or wait because you think it's still going to go up? Uh, interested to hear your thoughts because this is a, a, I'm an accidental PMG 
collector, I didn't set out to buy all these cards. I just got them because I like Spider-Man and X-Men cards, and I just wanted to buy something on an EPAC. Couldn't find sports cards during this time period. Um, and just let me know what you think. And uh, I'd like to hear what you think and uh, what your thoughts are. And I'll see you next time on Cards and Comics. And uh, please like and subscribe if you haven't. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.